Hi, my name is Macy Brummett, and I'm going to be talking to you about acid mine drainage and the reclamation of mined land. Acid mine drainage is a common problem at abandoned mining sites, but it can also occur in active mines. The Environmental Protection Agency defines abandoned mine drainage as water that is polluted from contact with mining activity and is normally associated with coal mining. This type of pollution is very common in states where coal mining was a common practice in past decades. The most common problem arising from abandoned mines is acid mine drainage, although there are other problems including alkaline mine drainage and metal mine drainage. Acid mine drainage forms when water becomes highly acidic due to chemical reactions occurring between surface or subsurface water and sulfur-bearing mineral rocks found inside of mines. Mining exposes large amounts of sulfur minerals which become oxidized and produce sulfuric acid. This acid then flows wherever uncontaminated water would usually flow and can leach heavy metals such as cadmium, copper, silver, and zinc out of rocks when it comes into contact with them. The result is a highly toxic fluid that can harm plants, animals, humans, and the environment as a whole. There are multiple chemicals available for the treatment of acid mine drainage including limestone, hydrated lime, pebble quicklime, soda ash, sodium hydroxide or caustic soda, and ammonia. Each chemical has a set of conditions where it will work better than another chemical option. Technical factors that play a role in the chemical treatment choice are acidity levels, flow, the metal concentration, and the desired final water quality. Economic factors include prices of reagents, labor, machinery, and many other expenses. Flocculants and coagulants can be used in combination with the chemicals previously mentioned. These substances help increase particle settling and precipitate metal so they can fall out of the flowing water. There are also ways to passively treat acid mine drainage that utilize naturally occurring chemical and biological processes to purify contaminated water. These passive treatments include constructed wetlands, limestone ponds, and open limestone channels. Constructed wetlands mimic the water-saturated soils and ponded water of natural wetlands and are built by using shallow excavations filled with gravel, soil, and organic matter. Aerobic wetlands are used to hold the contaminated water, providing residents time and aeration that will cause the metals present to precipitate. Anaerobic wetlands allow water to flow vertically through organic-rich substrates, which filters the water. Microbial reduction plays an important role in the cleansing of water through anaerobic wetlands. Passive treatment options are chosen based on water chemistry, flow rate, and the topography of the area. Although there are ways to treat acid mine drainage once it has become a problem, the best solution is to prevent acid mine drainage to begin with. The Surface Mining Control and Reclamation Act, SMCRA, of 1977, established the Office of Surface Mining Reclamation and Enforcement within the Department of the Interior. The goal of this board was to oversee programs to regulate active coal mines and to reclaim abandoned mining sites. Regulating active mines helps to reduce new environmental degradation and is carried out by environmental performance standards, permit requirements, and inspection and enforcement authorities, and restrictions on the land that can be mined. Active mines must be reclaimed after mining has been completed, but older mines should be reclaimed as well to limit their environmental impact. The SMCRA established the Abandoned Mine Land Reclamation Fund to help pay to rehabilitate the damage done by mines that were abandoned before 1977. Mining lands must be reclaimed to the highest previous use of the affected land. It must be a state similar to the natural terrain and vegetation, and wildlife and aquatic habitat resources must be reestablished. Reclaimed land can be used for agriculture, forestry, wildlife habitat, and recreation. Once this is done, it is important to revegetate the land as quickly as possible to prevent erosion, so rapidly germinating grass species are often applied. Hydroseeding is the most common technique to apply seed to the land because the mixture, which includes fertilizer, lime, mulch, and seed, improves seed germination. Forbs or herbaceous flowering plants can also be spread across the landscape. These include legumes, which are important for revegetation because they are able to fix nitrogen in the air and deposit it into the soil. Trees and shrubs are the last type of vegetation planted on reclaimed sites and are used when the desired final product is wildlife habitat or forest. Reclamation efforts are considered successful when they meet a set of three criteria. The first is that the plant cover controls erosion. The second is that the land is productive enough to support post-mining use, and the third is that the vegetation persists three times. 
Reclaiming the mined land rather than abandoning the mine and allowing acid mine drainage to begin greatly reduces the impact on water quality and other environmental harms. Reclamation can provide land for biomass production to produce energy, recreation opportunities, wildlife habitat, grazing for livestock, and many other uses that are beneficial to society and nature.